Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the mechanism of reduction, uh, how you're going to be converting the aldehydes and ketones into alcohols. So remember, if you have an aldehyde, that gets converted to primary alcohol, and if you have a ketone, that gets converted to a secondary alcohol. So if you're making it a primary alcohol, you don't really have any chirals in it, so you don't have to worry about the stereochemistry, but if you are converting the ketones into a secondary alcohol, you do have a chiral center there. So that means you got to worry about the stereochemistry, and typically you make racemic mixtures, which means you have a pair of enantiomers there. And I'll talk about in the mechanism here. So the two uh, reducing commonly used reducing agents in case of the reduction of aldehydes and ketones are going to be uh, the NABH4. Uh, the NABH4 can be used with protic solvents such as the methanol and even water, and then the second one is going to be the Li ALH4. The LiAlH4 cannot be used with protic solvents, but rather you're going to have to use either ether or THF. And uh, you usually work it up with uh, dilute acid or maybe just even water. And sometimes you can also work up the NaBH4 reaction with dilute acid just to kind of make sure that all the alcohol is pronated. Now, let's focus on this first one. And I'll, I'll use NaBH4 in one example, and then I'll use Li. ALH4 in the second example, and uh, they're, they're not really different from one another in terms of mechanism. So if I'm looking at uh, this first one here, so suppose the NABH4 is going to look like this in terms of structure. So this is minus charge here, and then we got the Na plus there. And uh, the bond between the boron and the hydrogen, hydrogen is going to take away the electron pair uh, that's going to be shared between the boron and the hydrogen and we can clearly see that this carbon of the carbonyl is going to be less electronegative than the oxygen so you have a partial negative charge here and a partial positive charge here so i can go ahead and use this to attack here and then while well, you attack this this pi bond breaks and it comes up here so then at the end of the day we make So you have an O minus there, so keep track of your electrons there. And I can go ahead and use the hydrogen with a different color there. So you have this hydrogen added for right now. So remember, there was already an hydrogen on that carbon because it's an aldehyde. So there was already an hydrogen there if I want to go ahead and draw that. You don't necessarily have to draw the hydrogen, but just, just to kind of see where all the bonds are coming from, we can draw that out. And then in the second step, I'm just gonna make a curve here. In the second step, I can go ahead and protonate this uh, uh, alkoxide ion that you just have made, and I can literally use the water to protonate it. So it depends on what you're really using as a solvent. So if you're using methanol, then you can use the methanol to protonate it, and if you're using water as a solvent, you can use water to protonate it. And sometimes you may also see in the books that you use a dilute acid just to kind of make sure that all the pro all that alkoxide is protonated. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this right there to protonate, and then creates the base there. So I'm just not going to draw the hydrogens now, but rather just this part here, so that makes it a primary alcohol there. Um, and if you want to use water, uh, the dilute acid in the second step as a workup, you can do that as well, just to kind of make sure all the alcohol is pronated. But this is going to be a typical mechanism for it. But now let's see how the mechanism of the ketone is going to be slightly different. Now, in case of ketone, and I'm going to use here uh, LiAlH4 just to have a difference there, but there's really not any difference in the mechanism. So the electronegativity difference between the aluminum hydrogen and between the boron hydrogen, there is a big difference. As a result, the polarity of aluminum hydrogen bond is bigger than the polarity of the boron hydrogen bond. So as a result, this uh, lithium aluminum hydride could also act as a base. So you want to avoid using any protic solvents in those cases. So you typically use ether as your solvent, and then at the end you will work it up with the dilute acid. Now, 
I had this carbonyl carbon where you got a partially positive charge here and the oxygen is going to have a partially negative. So I can do two types of tags there. So if I go ahead and you know try to change these colors here, so I can have this either doing the top attack or doing the bottom tag. And while I'm doing this, this is going to be coming out like this. So I got four carbons there in the main chain. So suppose this was a bottom attack, so I would have uh, this hydrogen going back into the page. So I don't really have to draw it, but I'll just try to just kind of show you guys. And that means this uh, OH, O minus, will be pushed out of the page. So that's one possibility. And obviously, your second possibility would have been what if you do a top attack. So I'm just going to write down here top attack. Or, you know, you, the books may say a left side, right side attack. So either way, you're going to be making an antimers there. So if I do a top attack there, I'm just going to copy this down. The difference here is just going to be. this out and then just change the color of this so this O would be back into the page and in that case the H would be coming out of the page so that's going to be your uh, first step to where the hydride attacks the carbonyl carbon and then you can just protonate that in the second step. So the second step for both of them is going to be indeed the same. So I can go ahead and protonate this using dilute acid. You want to make sure you show all the arrows in these uh, mechanism questions because that's what teachers really look for so I'm just going to draw that down here all I really got to have now is the OH there so that's going to be your one product and obviously your second product is going to be uh, very similar where I can have the H3O plus here so you don't really have to show both of the uh, steps there you can just show one of them and you can just write down at the end of the day that you're going to be making an intimer there but I just showed both of them just so that you guys can see how um, both side attacks will work there all right so you're going to have an OH there. So quickly, which one is going to be R and which one is going to be S? So that's going to be a good question for you guys to uh, quickly do that. But let me just go ahead and do that for you here. So when I'm looking at this chiral center, this is going to be one, two, three. So hydrogen is already back into the page. That's your lowest priority group. One, two, three going clockwise. So that's going to be an R. When I'm looking at my next one here, uh, this is going to be one, two, three. The number numbering doesn't really change, but what really changes here that hydrogen is coming out of the page now. So whatever it appears, you got to flip it. So it seems like it's going clockwise, but I got to flip it to make it counterclockwise so that your hydrogen can go back into the page. So this is actually going to be an S. So this is the mechanism you're going to have. Before we go, I want to do this one question. So I did say if you have an acute zone, you can make a pair of enantiomers here. Or you can call them receptive mixture. It's not always true, however. Like suppose if I have this example where I got an ketone there, but I already have an chiral center uh, present in the molecule. So if I go ahead and use suppose NaBH4 here in the presence of methanol, and then I can go ahead and work it up with an acid at the end of the day if needed, then I'm going to be making two products. All right, so I'm going to change the color of that. I'm just going to duplicate that again.
And I want to ask you what's going to be the difference between those. I'm not really going to draw the mechanism. So in one case, I would have the OH coming out of the page. And in the other case, I'm going to have the OH going back into the page. So if I see the, the chiral center that's uh, on the OH is actually flipped between the two molecules, but the other chiral center is not really flipped, that doesn't really change. That stays the same. So this right there and this right there stays the same. If I look at what's going to be the chirality there, that would have been 1, 2, 3, so that's going counterclockwise. Your hydrogen is already back into the page. That's going to be an S, so that's also going to be an S. But if I look at the OHs on the top here, so I got this is going to be 1, 2, and 3, so that's going to be an R, so that means the other chiral center on the OH is going to be an S. So you get an RS and then you get an SS in the second molecule. So they're not really an enantiomer, so you don't really make the resin initials in that case, but rather they are going to be the diastereomers. So this is how you're going to be doing the mechanism for the reduction of aldehyde from ketones using either NABH4 or LIELH4. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.